Welcome back. So I would, uh, before I start, I would again uh, reiterate on whatever we have learned. So we saw, and this entire lesson with different videos that you're watching is on acquiring confidence in front of an audience, okay? So the first part that we saw was on how to uh, encounter, uh, counter our uh, apprehensions, so communication apprehensions. Then we saw how to build self-confidence. Now we are going to see how to build confidence through preparation. And you must be thinking that all the time I'm only talking about preparations, preparing, practice and all that. It actually makes you confident, okay? So how do we prepare and show our confidence? That is what we are going to look at this particular section. Okay, so self-confidence through practice, uh, preparation. And preparation has many levels and you have seen in, le in our public speaking level one also that there are lots of steps that we follow. Now we are going to go a, a bit ahead of it and see what all preparations we need if we have to feel confident. Okay, now these are certain words that I've written here. Thinking, brooding, I mean again it's a part of thinking only but uh, this is uh, at times the thoughts are not channelized enough, okay? So some thoughts keep coming to you, that is brooding, daylight, daydreaming uh, in other words, recalling, so you're trying to recollect, okay, uh, certain words or certain events, that is recalling, selecting the ones that appeal to you most and it's all about thoughts, okay? So you are thinking, brooding, recalling, selecting the thoughts that appeal to you the most that has hit a chord that has made you uh, acquire certain knowledge and maintain that belief that you have okay polishing them working them into a pattern a mosaic of your own and it's all about thoughts here i'm talking about thoughts and preparation so i uh, I think I had asked this question to you in our previous uh, lessons in uh, level one that what age, at what age do you think you have started thinking or you had started thinking? And I ask these questions to children when I do live sessions and I've heard answers like maybe when I was one year old, maybe when I was um, three years old, maybe when I was two years old. And there's another question that at what age do you think you started communicating? And these are two separate questions. Now at what age did you start communicating? If you can just take some time and think. And again, I got answers like maybe one year. Uh, I started talking when I was uh, two years. So I get varied answers. And this answer is for at what age did you start talking or communicating? So it's actually not talking. At what age did you start communicating? Okay, communicate. At what age? So you actually start communicating even before you are born. I think I had told this to you. You used to send signals to your mom or to your parents and your mother is an audience here. You used to uh, share certain signals that flutters that you used to give, that kicks that you used to give were all part of communication. So by nature, you are a communicator. Okay, so there is no denial of the fact that by nature, you are a communicator. But at what age did thought starts coming to you? The thoughts didn't start coming when you were in your mother's womb. Um, the research shows that thoughts come to a child, a baby, when he's somewhere around six months old. That is when you start using your brain to think. You might not channelize those thoughts and speak because you, you still do not know how to talk, but you think, you dream, you think. So ask your mama, you must be smiling in your sleep. So you are dreaming, thinking and smiling, but you do not know how to express yourself at that age, okay? So you have to use, since you by birth, by nature, you are a person who can talk and think and communicate. You think, brood, recollect, recall, channelize these thoughts, select the ones which are useful for you and can make, you, make your belief more stronger. Select those thoughts only and appeal to you. Polish them. So now if you've got several thoughts uh, and you've chosen the right thoughts and I've done this for your uh, selection of topic and selection of main ideas for your speech, Repeat the same process if you want to show, show your confidence, okay? You will have to polish your thoughts, work around them and create a pattern. Mosaic is all about patterns. Create patterns and let your mind, it's all about having that speaker's mindset, okay? That, that mindset that you want to develop. Create patterns and let it get mapped to your mind. That is what you should do if you want to become a confident a person by nature, by 
by using preparation. So even before you start preparing, and this is part of preparing rather, when you are channelizing your thoughts, you are putting your thoughts, right thoughts into the right place, and then putting it in, mapping it into your mind. That's part of mind mapping though, but it, it actually helps you in becoming confident. Let's now move on to see what else you have to do. How do you prepare? What is the right way to prepare? Now I have all these good thoughts coming to me um, before my speech, during my speech for that matter. During, during your speech, mostly you are engrossed with whatever you are talking. But before your speech, before five minutes of your speech, half an hour of your speech or maybe 10 days, 15 days before your, you actually start delivering your speech. How do you prepare yourself so that when you are on the stage, when you are actually delivering your uh, speech or you are talking to your audience or you are talking to someone, in a formal environment, you look confident, okay? Now, there is something called canned thoughts, okay? Canned thoughts means, let's, let's say you're reading a book and uh, whatever words you're seeing, you're putting in your mind without even thinking beyond whatever is written. So, it's like a can, you've put all your thoughts in that and you are not using your own logic or imagination to describe those thoughts. So do not all do not rely on whatever um, you read. I mean, I'm not saying do not believe, but do not rely on those thoughts alone. You will have to every time you read something, just read one line, and then decode it in your own language. The moment you do this, you understand. Otherwise, it's all verbose, written something, and you are not able to decode it. You are not able to understand it. So whatever you read, do not let it become canned thoughts, put in, putting the thoughts in the can. No. Let these spread their wings. Let your own thoughts, your own positive um, affirmations and thoughts that you have come up with, let them reframe this, whatever you have seen or read or heard. Okay. So do not believe in these canned thoughts. And Often you would hear speakers say, this is what I was trying to say. Why were you trying to say? Why didn't you say it? So preparation is when you actually know what you're talking about. You know to the T what you are saying, not trying. There's nothing called trying. Either you do it or you don't. Either you say it or you're not. Okay? So there's not trying here. No trying involved. That's why whenever you are talking, whenever you are communicating and whenever your thoughts are coming to you, do not... Let your audience think that, okay, he is maybe trying to do something. No, he is doing something. He or she is doing something. She is talking. She is uh, sharing some knowledge. She is sharing some information with us. Okay, so do not, um, two things here, do not always rely on the things that you read. Just decode it and do not try to say. Say it with your own words. Reframe everything that you have learned, heard in your own words. Think around your thoughts. Now you would be thinking thoughts itself is thinking, how can I think around my thoughts? So I will show you a funnel, a small funnel here. So this is like lots and lots of thoughts that come into our mind, several thoughts. It could be uh, positive thoughts, it could be negative thoughts, it could be waste thoughts, okay? Outcome is nil, waste thoughts are of no use. I don't know why we think such, uh, such things. So now what you have to do is, you will have to only concentrate on the positive ones. Just, just let the negative and the waste thoughts go away from your mind. So, you are concentrating on the positive ones, okay? So, my positive thoughts. Once you've got these positive thoughts, you are going to assimilate these thoughts. Means, bring the thoughts together. Assimilate this and channelize. So, you've seen channels. Let's say these are all pipes. So, now at the top, you've got all these positive thoughts. Now channelize them, put them in different channels in your brain, in your mind. Channelize these thoughts, okay? Now when you've channelized these thoughts, and you can do this with preparation and practice. You can, it's just like shelves. So you have kept certain things in your shelf. You can open the shelf and start thinking about this particular channel. Then open next shelf. You can start, you can do that. And it all comes through practice, I'm telling you, and preparation. When you've done thorough preparation and practice, Automatically, you tune your mind. You can create these shelves, open it, bring in thoughts, close it, open another shelf, bring in thoughts, close it. You can do it if you are practicing it daily and it can happen to you as a student also. So I will channelize these thoughts and think around these thoughts of mine. At times, 
and I do these exercises with children. I give them uh, certain, I ask them to choose certain words and then they draft their own stories or speeches. When they do that, they're thinking around those thoughts. And I, I teach them a technique called mind mapping through which mind mapping, association, visualization, practice is something that I do, through which they can think around their thoughts. So they can open the channel, uh, they can open the shelf or channel, whatever you call it, bring in those thoughts and think around those thoughts. You can do that if you prepare yourself thoroughly and practice. And then you can write them down. Just a few words, associated words, and you see I've, I've left it open here. Whatever you can write, write, as I told you, uh, when thoughts come to you, when you read something, decode it in your own words. So just a few words, associated words, or maybe an entire sentence. Okay, this is how you prepare yourself for talking. And this is different from your speech preparation. This is so that your mind is not cluttered. Let's say you've forgotten something that you have memorized in your speech or you wanted to say something. You can open another channel and bring in those thoughts. Related, of course. It has to be related. Associated words, just a few words, related. So when you do this, you will be confident because you will never be able to forget anything. So I have tuned my mind. Let's say I've forgotten something. Immediately, within a nanosecond, I can open my channel and bring in the other thoughts that I've stored in my mind. So this is about preparation. Uh, showing confidence using preparation. All right. Now, uh, certain talking points. Just a thought. I mean, um, before you we end, what all are we going to do? Prepare well. It's about since you've written your speech, your topic, your ideas, your thoughts, your beliefs, and all that. But then prepare well as much as you can. Prepare well. This I had said in the previous section also, visualize success. When In the previous section, I said that visualize that you are talking, you are giving interviews, you are addressing crowd. Now visualize that people are clapping for you. They are excited. They are so happy listening to you. They are out of their uh, your chairs. They are just jumping and excited about you. Okay, Visualize success. This is going to make you feel confident when you actually go up on the stage. Breathe and release. I had given these uh, techniques earlier also and breathing exercise is part of everything. It should be a part of our daily life. So inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. You should keep doing that. Minimize what you memorize and that is why those channelizing simulation thoughts and everything is important. You have memorized something. Minimize whatever you have memorized means, whatever you have thought of, I mean, you have mugged up rather. Memorization, of course, is different from mugging up. Whatever you have memorized, you have kept in your mind related to your speech. Try to use, uh, minimize the usage of those and try to frame everything in your own words, if possible. That is going to make you a confident speaker. Practice out loud. Several times you must have heard me saying this. Practice out loud. Speak out loud. That is going to make you first thing understand how, how you hear. So listen to yourself and make you feel confident. Because every time you're hearing yourself talking and talking, that entire speech is now literally a very seamless flow in your mind. Customize your practice. So how do you do that? You have to customize the way you practice. Okay, At times you're standing in front of a mirror. At times you're talking to uh, your family. I mean, you're giving the speech to your family or uh, you've spoken, uh, you know, talk to your friends, make them your audience, so customize depending on the availability of people and the situation. Be absorbed by your subject. This is how you prepare yourself. Be absorbed. Absorbed means you should literally, uh, just like a sponge absorbs water or any liquid, likewise whatever you have, uh, the subject that you have chosen, be absorbed. So you should be knowing thoroughly everything about that subject. Okay. Take that plunge, finally, until and unless. You take that plunge, you will not be able to do any of these things. How do you show that you are confident unless you take that plunge? Initially, you will have those jitters, but you will emerge as successful because you have already visualized success. So when you prepare using these methods, you will be able to show your confidence and you will actually become confident in front of your speakers. So I hope you will follow all of these things in order to develop that speaker's mindset. And I will see you on the other side. Thanks for watching.